Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith of West London Wine School, South London Wine School, and Streatham Wine House here in London in the United Kingdom. Um, welcome to another session on grape varieties. This is our intermediate version of Tempranillo. And the intermediate version is ideal for those of you studying your WSET level two. Um, so if you require more information about the grape variety Tempranillo through its history, its etymology, its viticulture, vinification, uh, and also what it tastes like and where it's from, then please look at our advanced version, which is ideal for WSET level three and level four. And you can find the information in that in the comments below this video. So let's move on for the intermediate version, ideal for level two. Now this, um, uh, we're running these through our wine school. So my name is Jimmy Smith at Wine with Jimmy, and that's my Twitter and my um, Instagram. Please get in touch for any comments or questions. At West London Wine is the West London Wine School uh, Twitter handle and Instagram. South London Wine and then Streatham Wine House. There are two wine schools and a wine bar here in London, United Kingdom. If you are coming to London, if you are in London, please come and see us for a class or a glass. Uh, and uh, all our information is on our website. So brilliant. So let's move on about Tempranillo. We're just going to talk generally about Tempranillo, where we find it and what it's like uh, suitable for your WSET level two. So Tempranillo first up is um, the most planted Spanish red variety, please mention here. In fact, there is a white variety, which is more. You don't need to know that. But the most planted Spanish red variety with over 200,000 hectares of vines. It is a very significant player indeed. Um, it's good in moderate or warm climates. So it doesn't like the hottest of places. That in Spain is often given to the varieties like Garnacha, which you also need to know about. But Tempranillo is better in the continental zones, but with a bit more tempered climate. So maybe some altitude, for instance, just to cool down the area. That is because it doesn't like water, a lack of water, so drought stress too much. Um, as a variety in Spain and in Portugal, in fact, it will make wines which are completely simple and fresh and easy drinking all the way up to remarkably complex, such as Grand Reservas. Um, so it is a very diverse grape variety indeed. Um, it generally has medium acid and medium tannin, though this can differ depending on the production philosophy, but normally balanced acid and tannins. So that is the freshness and the kind of structure. Um, and then blending. Tempranillo is normally the base grape of most Spanish red wines, but it may be topped up. So I've said a small percentage here, often around 10% of other varieties may be blended into Tempranillo that could be both indigenous to Iberia or international varieties such as French varieties. It depends on where it is in Spain. Um, so it can uh, normally be blended, but you will find some single varietal Tempranillos as well. That's becoming more popular. Um, and then the aging, aging and also bottle aging. So um, often a lot of oak is used in the more premium style uh, Spanish wines, uh, but even some sort of shortcuts as well are made for more friendly, uh, affordable wines. But a lot of new oak as well and often American because of the Spanish connection to the Americas. Uh, so you'll often find that's quite important. Um, but also there can be quite extensive bottle aging on top. So if you look at the list here on the right hand side, you have kind of, this is for Rioja, but it is applicable to all Spanish wine. And you'll see the top one, which is kind of a greenish uh, look, that is Conseja or otherwise known as Joven, so young wines, which have no aging. They, they often won't be oak aged and they won't be bottle aged. They will be sold very quickly and drunk very quickly. Then there's Criantha, which has a little bit of uh, oak aging and a little bit of bottle aging. Reserva, which has more. And then Gran Reserva, which has even more. And they actually have the highest minimum stipulations for both oak and bottle aging. So basically, as you go down that list, you're going from fresh and fruity to more complex with layers of flavors, including oak and then tertiary characteristics like mushrooms and nutty characteristics and savory notes. 
Okay, uh, so it's quite classic because, of course, Rioja, uh, we very much know in the world of wine, uh, in cons consumption of wine, the Criantha name, the Reserva name, the Grand Reserva name. And certainly in a market like Britain, uh, we are actually the biggest export market for, um, for, for Rioja outside of Spain itself in the world. So therefore, we, we actually do know these terminologies quite well. Not specifically, but we, we recognize them and it gives us an indication of its quality. Now, a word on that, it doesn't necessarily mean that Criantha is going to be less quality than Reserva and less quality than Gran Reserva. These are minimum aging lengths and they increase as you go down this list. It basically changes the characteristics of the wine, moving from a primary base wine to a more tertiary led wine. So it gives you an idea of its flavor profile that it may have. So this means that you can get brilliant Crianthas, for instance, which are gorgeous, easily drinking and uh, with good, good texture behind it. Uh, and you can get brilliant reservers. For some of you, reservers may be your best category, better than Grand Reserver, because Grand Reservers are very aged styles before release. So it's about what you like as a style. Um, personally, I think the Reserva is probably the most balanced of the categories, really actually bringing a, a harmony between primary, secondary, and tertiary characters. But there are equally brilliant, if not better, Grand Reservas, as there are Crianthas as well. And even young wines, Consejo or Joven, the top one, can be, at its moment in time, in the right place, gorgeously, easily, wonderful drinking if it is, say, in a very hot day and you wanted to chill a red wine, like a Hoven, which you can. Um, now, the locations, they only really want you to identify that it is from Spain. It is also found in Portugal and Argentina and even Italy. However, it is Spain where we find most of it, of course, a whopping 207,000 hectares. So there's a lot of it here, um, mainly in La Rioja and also next door in Navarra. Ribera del Duero and Catalunya. Now, in La Rioja, um, it makes often quite rounded, soft styles for the most part with medium acid, medium tannins. Ribera del Duero, because of its higher altitude and more continental zone, it'll actually make more tannic, more full bodied, and more acidic wines. They are actually much more destined for longer aging in Ribera del Duero. And then in Catalunya, because of the French influence here, you'll often find that Tempranillo is commonly blended with things like Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, making rounded, good, approachable wines. And what does it taste like? So um, Tempranillo will give you often a base of red fruits, things like strawberries, raspberries, and red plum and cherries. Um, that is often in the past why it's been confused with Pinot Noir. It was originally thought to be Pinot Noir or Pinot Noir that was brought down by monks into Spain, uh, but that's been dispelled. It is a proper Iberian variety. So the fruit base is normally quite reddish. It can get a little bit blackish in areas like Ribera, but normally red. Um, it will have oak, uh, not always, but it's uh, classic with Criantha, Reserva, Gran Reserva, to have things like oak, uh, tobacco, smoke, but also things like coconut and vanilla because of the American oak influence. And then when it ages, mushroom, meaty, leather, game. And that is another reason why it's often in the past been sort of confused with Pinot Noir. It definitely has these lovely tertiary components, which are similar to Pinot Noir. Um, acids and tannins will vary, but generally medium across these with, with moderate alcohol as well. It's a rather well-balanced variety. So that really is it as a look at your, your WSET level two. There is much more to know, of course, but please check out our advanced version if you require more information on history, etymology, etymology uh, viticulture, vinification, uh, and uh, where we find it in the world. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please get in touch at Wine with Jimmy. There's our two wine schools and our wine bar as well. Once again, please come and see us for a, a class or a glass when you're in London next. Been a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you've learned something. Thank you.